So welcome to part two of making an HDRI panorama from Street View. And what I've done is to load up DAS Studio and put the map of Nice that we just created, which at the moment is a uh, JPEG, into the environment map. And I've turned the draw dome on so that we can actually see that in the background. Now I'm using DAS Studio for this, but you can use any 3D program that will support background images and HDRIs. So I'm just going to go to the iRay previewer and if we just wait while that loads into iRay and you can see that the background looks very bright and it's a bit washed out but the illumination effect on the figure is very uniform and that's kind of what you'd expect of a JPEG because it doesn't have lighting information baked into it so where the sunshine should be really bright we're not getting any of that particularly bright effect on the figure and also a JPEG has built-in gamma information which is what's causing this washed out look so the first thing to do is to fix the gamma information and we can do that by just converting in Photoshop. I've, I've just got Photoshop CS2 here, so it's a very old version, but it's fine for what we need to do. If we go to image mode, first of all, convert it to 16-bit, because it won't allow you to take it to 32-bit in one step, or at least this version won't, and then to 32. So we now have a pretty much identical image, but instead of being 8-bit deep, so 256 levels for red, green and blue, we've got pretty well infinite levels. Although, because it's being converted, it's, it's still the same information. So, But if we now save it, and we're going to save it as a uh, in the radiance format, so that's going to be an HDRI. We can keep the same name, so we're going to save that off. These are much larger files because it's um, containing four times the information that a JPEG would do and the compression is, is not the same. So um, unfortunately it does create very large files. But when we come to use it in a 3D application, it will now be read properly as an HDRI without the gamma information. And we'll see that it produces a much nicer background image. Okay, so we've now saved the HDRI and I can load it back into DAS Studio. So if we just browse to that, load the HDRI. And now once that's loaded into iRay, we'll see the preview again. And now you can see that the background doesn't have that washed out look, but the illumination effect that we're getting on the figure still isn't bright enough because the sunlight in the scene is just at 255 rather than the sort of much brighter effect that you would get if you were using a proper HDRI because at the moment we haven't incorporated any lighting information. So that's the next step. So I'm just going to turn off the IRO render there. I'm going to go back into Photoshop and if you look at this image there's only one source of light which is the the sun here. So what we need to do is to, if we select that, now the larger you make the selection, the softer the light is going to be. So if you want a very hard edge to the shadows, then you need to make that selection quite small. And I'm going to feather it. So if we go into feather, Let's choose 20. So we can see if we go into the quick mask edit, you can see that everything is masked off apart from the sunlight there. And we've given it a bit of a soft edge. And what we need to do is to adjust the exposure just of that particular section. Now exposure values, every time you add one, it's going to double the brightness. So just be careful of using values too high because it is a sort of logarithmic scale. So three will give you eight times, four will give you 16 times and so on. 
And I found that a value of about six quite often will do the trick. But it's always worth testing this out and going to and fro between Photoshop and Daz Studio or whatever target software you're using and trying it out. But we're going to use, we're going to try a value of six and we're going to save that off again. But this time it's got the lighting information from the sun baked into the HDRI. Everything else has been left untouched. If you do have multiple light sources within your scene, you can multiple select and, and do those. So you can be very flexible in terms of the lighting that you can set up for your scene. But it's lighting that's actually baked into the HDRI. And you can colour the lighting as well. So again, we're going to just save that. And once that's done, we'll reload that into Daz Studio. So here we are back in Daz Studio. What I'm going to do is to just select the JPEG version again. And then reload the HDRI. Just make sure that we get the new version rather than the old version. If I now go on to the IRA preview again, we should get the new version of the HDRI with the sunlight included. And here we can see the, the result of that. And you can see that we're getting a nice light on the figure now. And we can be sure that the direction of the light is consistent with the lighting in the background because it all comes from the HDRI. So if we now, say, rotate the dome, let's rotate that 90 degrees, then we can see that we've got shadows um, coming off towards the right and that is also consistent on the figure. We're getting a little bit of street view artifacting on the road here, um, but it's pretty easy to find a suitable angle that you won't be able to see any of the artifacts. Because street view images are taken from the top of a car, you can see that the, the figure is, looks out of scale here, so it's best to try and avoid having other figures in the scene. But you can see that the lighting is consistent with the scene now. We could probably have gone one stop more in terms of the lighting, but that would be for you to uh, to play around. But you can see that you can produce some very nice images by using this technique of capturing a street view panorama in JPEG format and then converting it into an HDRI. And you can use the technique for editing HDRIs, so to adjust the lighting in a pre-existing HDRI or to create something completely abstract and then using the selection and exposure method within Photoshop to add lighting information onto that to produce some really interesting lighting setups for your scenes.